Alright, what's up everyone? Today I'll be going through how to do the e-perms. So there really is only one popular e-perm algorithm that I would recommend. Uh, it's the RUD version which, which requires a rotation towards the top like this. And the algorithm is shown as follows. So if you have trouble memorizing that algorithm, I'll go through some more memorization techniques later on in the video. I'll put the timestamp here if you want to skip to that right now. So before I talk about memorization, I want to first talk a little bit about recognition because EPERMs are known for how difficult they are to recognize. Now they're difficult to recognize because Usually with PLOs we recognize them based on matching colors or headlights or a mixture of those two. But on an EPERM you may notice that there are no headlights and no matching colors and that is the main way of recognizing the EPERM. So if you look around all the sides there's no headlights, no matching colors, it's definitely the EPERM. But it's also important to know which direction you can do the algorithm from. So with EPERMs, they can be done from two angles and they're recognized by looking at the side edge and the front corner here. So these two colors need to be matching. Same on the other side as well. So if these are matching, then you're facing the correct direction. You could just rotate upwards and do the algorithm. However, if you held it from this angle, this edge and this front corner here are not matching, instead they're opposite colors, then you can't actually do the algorithm from this angle. Or well, you can, but it won't work. You'll be left with a H perm, and then you'll have to solve the H perm again. So the best way to recognize it is to look at the edge color here and the corner color here. Make sure that these two are matching. That's how you know you're facing the correct direction to do the algorithm. Alright, so the EPERM algorithm is a fairly long 16 move RUD algorithm. The RUD moves may seem random at first, but if you look closely there is a nice pattern to it. So I'll be going over some nice ways to memorize this algorithm. So once again, to recognize which angle you need to do it from, as mentioned previously, these two colors need to be matching. So we're facing the correct angle here, same on this side as well, they're matching, so this is the correct angle. So from now, we have to rotate upwards, so make sure you're always facing the yellow side before you do the algorithm. Alright, so the algorithm starts with an R followed by a U prime. So you can remember the U prime as the top layer going towards the right side, like this. Next up, it's followed by the R prime, followed by the D, which also means that the bottom layer goes towards the right side, like that. Next up, we have R again with U, which means that the top layer goes towards the left. R prime followed by D prime, which means that the bottom layer goes towards the left, like that. All right, so that's the first half of the algorithm. The second half is similar, but the U and D moves are slightly different in terms of direction. So once again, you got R followed by U. So this means that the top layer is going towards the left this time around. R prime D means that the bottom layer is going towards the right, so they're going in different directions this time. Finally, we got the R followed by U prime, which means that the U layer is moving back towards the right. And then final two moves, R prime and then D prime, which means that the bottom layer is going towards the left. And so that's pretty much how the algorithm goes. It's alternating R moves, along with alternating U and D moves, the first half of the algorithm, the U and D moves go in the same direction. The second half of the algorithm, the U and D moves go in different directions. So if that was your first time learning the EPERM algorithm, I know that would have been a lot to take in. So I'll go through it again quickly just to make sure that you got everything. All right, so once again, making sure that these colors are matching, that's the correct angle to do the EPERM. As I said, 
the first half of the algorithm, the U and D moves are always going in the same direction. So what I mean by that is when you're doing R, U and R, D, notice that both the U and D moves were going towards the right side. And then same for this part as well, R, U, R, D, it's all going towards the left side. So that that's the first half. With the second half, they're going in different directions. All right, so the first U move is going towards the left side, whereas the first D move is going towards the right side. And then they're going in, once again, opposite directions for the final four moves. So the right side goes up and the U layer goes towards the right side and then the D layer goes towards the left side. So that's the EPERM algorithm. It's really got quite a distinct pattern, but it will take some time to get used to. So I do recommend practicing and drilling the algorithms, getting used to the finger tricks as well, which I'll mention in a bit. But yeah, lots of practice will be really beneficial for you. So the biggest problem I see a lot of beginners facing when they're learning the finger tricks for the EPERM is doing the D moves. Now the D moves can be done just with your ring finger with a flick like this. This works quite well and it is probably the best way to do it. Um, with D primes, it's definitely easier if you use your ring finger and push back on the D layer like this. I have seen people who re-grip their right hand just to do D from this side, but if you do that, you'll have to re-grip all the time and it will slow down the algorithm a lot. So if you use the D prime push with your left hand, you won't have to ever regroup during an EPERM and it will make it really a lot faster. So I'm aware that the D prime push with your ring finger may not feel natural at first. Um, it took me quite a long time to get used to this move. So I recommend when you're first doing the algorithm, uh, do it slowly, just get used to this movement with your ring finger. And then once you feel like you're getting the hang of it, then start speeding the algorithm up and then it will slowly become muscle memory. So finally, it's time to talk a little bit about AUF. So AUFs for EPERMs are once again, fairly obvious if you know what you're looking for. The easiest way is to look at the front edge color. So that color won't move, same with any of the edges on the cube but it's easier to look at the front ones. So a red edge means that the red side will end up at the front, which means that in this case, I have no AUF. Here again, we have an EPERM and this is holding it at the correct angle because once again, these two colors are matching. We'll notice that we have an orange edge at the front on a red side. This means that after the algorithm, this side will be orange but orange actually belongs at the back, so the AUF here is a U2. So as I mentioned, it's been really important to hold the EPERM so that these two colors here are matching. So you might be wondering, well, what happens when they're not matching? Well, we can give it a try. In this case, from this angle, these colors are not matching. So as you can notice, they're orange and red, they're not matching. Um, so let's do it from this angle, see what happens. So you'll notice that we get a H perm. So it's really important to do the E perms from the correct angle, because if you do them from the incorrect angle, you'll end up with H perm, which means you have to do PLO again. All right, so no one's got time to do PLO twice, so make sure you do it from the right angle the first time. All right, so that's it for the E perm tutorial. Thanks again for watching. Like the video if you learned something new. Please subscribe if you want to see more similar videos and share these videos with friends or family or people you know who are learning PLO or who want to learn PLO. It really helps grow the channel and I really appreciate everyone's support. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.